Today I'm going to walk you through how to set up the Tyke Developer Portal to allow for full monetization. Uh, to do this, we're going to use some JavaScript in our uh, portal pages. We're going to create some custom portal pages uh, and inject our uh, HTML and CSS uh, inside. And then we are going to hook it up with Stripe. Stripe is going to accept our payment from our uh, end users and it's going to fire off a webhook once the payment has succeeded. The webhook will call a Tyke API that's going to uh, be written by us uh, as a virtual endpoint, uh, like a serverless function that will approve our key request and grant the end user the key. Okay, so it's going to look pretty straightforward. So let's uh, switch over to our type developer portal here. We can see that here's our portal. We have uh, we have some some links here. Pseudo catalog is where we're going to spend our time. So we're gonna we're gonna write uh, some HTML and JavaScript here that's gonna make an API call to retrieve our uh, APIs for sale, and then render the content that will allow us to purchase them. Okay, and the content for that is here in this um, in this HTML file. So we have, and uh, I'm going to post this and the gist for all the code that we use alongside the video or you can download them. Okay, so we have a script here. Uh, when the window loads, we're gonna use jQuery to make an HTTP call to uh, HTTP localhost 8080. Uh, the type gateway is running locally on port 8080. And then I have a public APIs, uh, uh, API, and then a public catalogs listen path, uh, excuse me, endpoint on my API, okay? So this is actually a virtual endpoint. This is an API that I've set up in Tyke through the Tyke dashboard that's going to uh, fire off a virtual endpoint written in JavaScript every time we hit this API. We'll take a look at what that looks like shortly. So after the request comes back here in the success, you can see we build the response. It's We build the table. With, uh, with headers, API name, authentication type, the documentation, and then a purchase link. And then in the response, we're going to build each individual row with the uh, response from the APIs. Finally, we're gonna create a searchable input that's gonna filter our cells based off of the uh, value of the search. And then some uh, CSS. So let's copy all of this and go back to Tyke here. I'm going to open up the developer portal, and then uh, I want to go into the portal management, and I want to open up the pages, and then, um, so let me just re-log in here, and then what I want is to uh, is to create a new page if I haven't already done that, uh, and then for the create a page, we'll call it pseudo catalog. The slug can also be pseudo catalog, and then for page type, we're gonna we're gonna pick default page template, and we're gonna paste that in. So I've already done that here, pseudo catalog. We can see our title, we can see our slug. And then the uh, the, the field name we're gonna paste is that uh, that all that uh, from the file we were just looking at an update. So now if we go back to our developer portal and we switch over to the pseudo catalog, we can see some content being generated. I have my front end APIs, my MTLS APIs, my front API is gold. I see the auth type for all of them. I see the documentation for all of them, and then I see the purchase link for all of them. Uh, so the API that it's calling, let's take a look. So under system management here, we're gonna go to APIs, and then I'm gonna go to public APIs, and then we can confirm there's the listen path that was uh, that's being uh, that was hard uh, coded in the uh, HTML file. And then under endpoint designer, we can see our public catalog, and this is the URL that's gonna reverse proxy to our um, so th this is the your this is the endpoint that's going to get invoked every time we hit the public API slash pub catalog, and if we go back to our JSON, we can see here's the gateway URL and here's the public API's listen path and the pub catalog. So, so if, let's switch back. So this is the API that's being invoked every time by that API call. Now the JavaScript in here, it's just going to make a self request to the dashboard. It's going to get the API catalog. This is traditionally a protected API, so I've added an authentication token with this user's auth token. And then we uh, we just return the response of the API catalog. 
Now, if we wanted to do some filtering in here to only show public catalogs versus internal catalogs, that kind of a thing, we could put that logic in here. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just returning all the APIs available by the catalog. Okay. So uh, I can, I've also added the documentation. So if I go into uh, documentation for an API, we actually get the Swagger sandbox. But what I want to look at today is this purchase URL. So um, if we click on this, let's see what happens. We get purchase, I get request a key. And then if I request a key, well, let's see where Tyke takes us. It says, please, while we, while we redirect you, input here. Uh, so we still have to build this. So how does this work? So let's go back to Tyke API Gateway. First thing I do is under settings is I enable the required key approval to turn that flow on. And then I redirect key requests to this URL. And here's the uh, URL for my portal running locally. I gave it a custom host name entry. And then the portal prefix for the, develop, for the dev portal. And then the request key endpoint. And now I created a custom page called request key. So if we go on your pages, we can see we have a request key page here. And it's, we create, it's the same kind of page as before uh, that we did for the pseudo catalog, except this time we're going to use a different uh, bit of uh, HTML. Okay, so this time, let's zoom in a little bit here. So here we go. So starting here, we inject uh, some Stripe JavaScript. And essentially, when we hit the page, Stripe is going to redirect the checkout. Uh, the key components passed in here is a success URL. So once the payment is success, a key cloak is, uh, excuse me, um, Stripe is going to redirect us to the uh, success page on our developer portal. That's another page that we've created. And then the most important bit is right here is the client reference ID. So this is, we pass a, a variable to Stripe that Stripe will in include in the webhook once the payment is successful. And this is a query parameter that Tyke will generate the, the key request ID. So let's see what it looks like. And uh, actually let's copy all of this and go back to here, paste that in our request key page and then update. And then let's try again. So we go to our pseudo catalog, and this time I want to purchase my front end API is gold, uh, request a key, and I request a key. Okay, sweet. So um, what has happened? Well, so Tyke has redirected us to our, uh, to, to Stripe. Stripe, excuse me, has redirected us to the payment page, but uh, Tyke, when it took us to the request key page that we had defined in our setting, I'm going to go back to my setting here. So Tyke, after we hit request key, it redirected us to this page, but it also included a query parameter called the Tyke request ID. And it was the ID of the key request. So here in your portal management, if I open up key request and go to, uh, so I can see that there's two right now. So the one from 35 seconds ago is the one we want to look at. If I go into here and I view this key request, we can see that it has a key ID. This is the key ID that was included in the query parameter. And in our code, we can see that it's injected as a client reference ID. So let's keep going, let's follow through. So here we are on our uh, payment. So now I'll put uh, my email here and use a fake credit card and uh, give it a fake um, expiry date and all that good stuff and said key at Tyke and then blah, blah, blah for my postal and then we pay. So now after Stripe accepts this payment, it's going to fire off a webhook that we've set up. The webhook is going to invoke a type URL. It's going to pass that client reference ID, which is the ID of a queue request. And then uh, it's really that simple. So we have a payment success. Tyke has redirected us to our portal slash success page. We can see the payments received. Please check your email for a copy. If we go back to Tyke and we go to key requests, we can see that about a minute ago this was created and it actually failed. Um, and that's because we have to set up Stripe. So what we have to do is first let's reject this so we can start the flow again. And let's go back to the Stripe dashboard. So here we are, we're in the Stripe dashboard. Um, you can see I have a product and here's my gold credit score API access. And for the product, we have a use with checkout button that's gonna generate our JavaScript that I've included in the, uh, in the, in the last step. So, uh, under developers, I can create a, a webhook. And for the webhook, here it is here. I want to 
um, add a webhook that Tyke, uh, excuse me, that Stripe will invoke that will go to Tyke. So here is our URL. We have to edit it here. So let's, um, how do I edit this? Update details. Okay, so the endpoint URL is here. It's HTTPS, the Tyke gateway URL. I want the public APIs and then the payment success endpoint. And then I want to pass an authorization token so that it's allowed to hit it. So uh, seeing as I'm running Tyke locally, uh, I can't type localhost in here. I have to give it an actual API for it to, for it to hit. So um, if I was running Tyke on, um, with a public IP, that wouldn't be a problem. But we have to do some uh, magic to get, uh, to get it to work locally. So there's an application that I'm going to use. It's called Engrok. And what it basically does is it opens up a reverse proxy to a local application running on my laptop. So I'm going to hit Engrok, and then HTTP, and then AB80, and then that's it. And what this does, it generates a publicly accessible uh, IP or, uh, or, or, or name here that we can access from outside, and it's going to reverse proxy traffic from this, um, from that uh, DNS entry to my local host on traffic 8080. So if I copy this and I open up a little terminal here, and I do a curl to that public IP at the hello endpoint, we should get a hello back from our tight gateway. So all is good. So now if we go back to Stripe, we can paste that URL in here. Oh, I pasted, copy the wrong thing. Let's copy that and paste that in here. Okay, get rid of that, fix this up. HTTPS and there's ngrok and now we give it the listen path public API slash payment success. What's the payment success uh, API? So let's go back to our APIs, our public APIs and this time, we don't want a public catalog. Uh, we want the success endpoint. And this is the one that Stripe is going to invoke. Okay. And what this does is it uh, receives a request. It takes a look, a look at the client reference ID in, in the payload. And then it makes a, a, a new API request to the Tyke dashboard to approve the key request that has, it has been handed. Okay. And the code for both of these is going to be available. Uh, it's represented here as an API definition. This API definition type, we can actually copy the whole thing and go back to type and go to APIs. And then we can import an API and then from type definition, paste that file and generate an API. And you can see now there's two of them. Type will actually import this for us along with the APIs uh, and, and the virtual endpoints themselves. Okay, so let's delete this so we don't have a clash. And there it is. So that's it. Uh, now, the last thing we need is it's a protected endpoint, so we have to generate a token for uh, Stripe. So in the dashboard, go to keys, and I add a key. Uh, and then this time I scroll down to access rights, and I choose my public APIs, um, API, and I create, and type generates a token for me, so I can copy that and go back here, and then paste that in. And that's it. So this is a virtual endpoint that will prove a key request in a JSON body payload, and then I update my endpoint. And we can see that's not updated. So now, if we uh, restart our flow, let's go to pseudo catalog. I want to purchase a thing. I request the key. We get redirected. Uh, so don't at me.com 424242 4242, and then some distant date, said key at tyke. Uh, N6H5X5, and then I pay. And now um, we should have a successful key. So go back here, we check under our key requests. We can see that there's no key request, and if I switch on to the approve tab, you can see 28 seconds ago a key has been approved. And that's it. So now, uh, start to finish, we've added an API in Tyke, we've protected our API, and we've exposed it to the developer portal. and Using a bunch of webhooks, we were able to take a full monetization flow where a user is able to subscribe to an API and pay for it and then receive a token granting them access to the API.